Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us in the studio today. It's a gorgeous day here in Portland, Oregon. So I hope I see in the chat that it's not so gorgeous everywhere you guys are. So wish you well and um, stay safe. Um, and then the first thing that I want to do is tell you again, I'm going to go long today because I have a lot to talk about. Big announcements, big exciting announcements. I have some cool stuff to share with you. And then I've got this lovely uh, reference photo to work from. So I'm hoping to just, you know, quiet myself <laughs> and, and paint a nice piece for you today. So hopefully it all goes smoothly. But I'm, first of all, I wanted to share something really sweet with you guys, and I was I, that I came across. I was kind of rummaging through some stuff, getting a little organized, and it's it's this letter, and um, this letter is from the artist Leo Politi, who was actually a quite famous um, children's book illustrator, muralist, very interesting guy, and um, since. Um, Becoming being an adult, I've learned a lot more about him. But when I was a little kid, I didn't know very much about him. But he was an he was Italian, and he had a really interesting um, family and history, and um, lived in London for a number of years, and actually got a very um, amazing art education. Um, but he wrote many many children's books. And he visited the library where my mom worked in Thousand Oaks, California, when I was 10 years old. And uh, I wrote him a letter and sent him a drawing, and he wrote back to me. And so here's the letter. It's so sweet. It's written with a pen. It looks like it's a dipped pen. And it uh, has up here. It says Christmas time, and it says, Dear Marla, thank you mu so much for the beautiful drawing of the kitten you sent me, and congratulations for winning the best of show displayed at the Village Square Mall. You have lots of talent, and if you continue to draw and paint all the time, it will bring, you will find it will bring you great happiness as you grow up. And so, <laughs> wow. And uh, and someday you might want to do it professionally and have all the fun that I've had during my life as an artist. Leo Politi. And it says, now my dogs are singing and barking a Merry Christmas to you. And I just want to point out a couple of so sweet things about this letter. The Christmas time, he wrote Christmas time, and the, the, he did this little drawing, and I love this little line down here in the star. It's so nice. I even have, my mom must have saved this for me. I even have the envelope that it came in. It's December 20th, 1972, and that makes me 10 years old when I got this letter. But it's so sweet, and uh, it just is, to me, a kind of astonishing that he took the time to write to me. We were talking before we started the stream that probably artists who write children's books like that have a fan base that they set aside time to respond to, but it's still like just very, very, very sweet. And um, I uh, so appreciated it at the time, and now I appreciate it kind of even more. And the award that he was talking to, I even have the the picture, that's me when I was 10 years old, and um, that's me getting the award. I was in fifth grade, and um, so I've been doing this a long time, and I guess that's a couple of my points here, that um, I have been doing it a long time, and I have been so lucky to be supported by uh, in, my, in my life, and it's been filled with art, just like he said. It's so amazing. And I think I'm good at teaching, and I'm good at being a cheerleader for artists because it has been such a deep well of goodness for me, and I hope all those around me. Um, but it does take that time and persistence. He says, if you do it all the time, uh, consistency and persistence, I think it is uh, has it all over the talent thing. 
And I don't say this to be discouraging, that it takes consistency and persistence over time. I don't say it to be discouraging to those or maybe of you that have maybe started late, more to, to just express my um, view that it's been so amazing. It's so healing, calming, satisfying, and really joyful to be able to create an image that makes you pause a little bit and go, oh, wow, I think I, that was pretty good. I did pretty good. Um, but it does take time. And I, I do see, um, and I'm just going to roll into, you know, how I feel about my lessons because I do see a lot of organizations out there promising that if you sign up for, for their one or two or three day workshop or even a week that you're going to somehow get the, some secret key to be able to paint better. Um, and geez, I, I, I wish I had that. I don't have that. Um, but I, and I think these kinds of events and products can be really inspiring and you might be able to get a couple kernels that could be helpful. But from my years of experience, I truly honestly believe that the way to improve your painting is that dedicated, persistent, consistent effort. Um, I've actually signed up for some of those things and with that limited timetable and not done them at all <laughs> because at my core, I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> I really am. And I like to do things on my own schedule, on my own time when I'm ready and prepared and I'm in, in, in a place to really absorb whatever information. And I don't think that you can absorb that information in just a few days. And so that's why I'm super, that's why I designed my lessons a little differently than that. And I'm really, really proud of them because my flagship membership, Pastel, monthly pastel painting lessons online, is now in its third year of production. And with this subscription, you'll have that consistency and um, persistent access to painting and pastel. Because as long as you're a subscriber to monthly pastel painting lessons online, you can view it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every all year long for as many years as you're an active subscriber and new subscribers now get twice as much um, at, at the amount of content as they did before all for the same really affordable price and right now it's never been a better time to sign up that we have a sale going on right now it's through the summer and after that the price will have to go up we just have to so for a limited time it's on sale and you can use the coupon code WOOHOO3 and you get $37 off any order. Um, but sorry, that doesn't apply to renewals. And you can either pay monthly and get access to three new sessions each month for a one-time annual payment. You get all 36 sessions right away. And that includes about 200 videos and 36 beautifully illustrated study guides and all subscribers get access to the nocturne session right when you sign up so every session features focuses on a topic either a fundamental of painting or a subject and it includes several each session includes several videos and full-length step-by-step demonstrations as well as a study guide so all in all you get access to hundreds of pages of study one of my students calculated recently and said that it was over 900 pages and he said it was the pastel Bible. So thanks to David for that. And well over again, well over 200 hours of video in your first 12 months as a member. So I just want to kind of go through because that's kind of, it feels kind of confusing even to me because it, it, it is a lot, um, but it isn't that confusing when you, when you think about it. So first of all, when you sign up, you get um, three full lessons from each year. So what that means is, this is an example. These aren't the exact pieces, but let me just show you. So in your first month, let's say it's you're gonna get you're gonna get three three projects from year one. So three projects from year one. This is the projects on including structures. And I actually don't have the third. What? 
Okay, great. We'll do that. Yeah, I got to put the thing in the right place. So this is the this is the uh, session on including structures. So this is from year one, and then you also get three lessons from year two. So this is the um, flowers. I think in this one, there, you actually got four lessons and flowers. So it's usually three or four. So this is in the first month, you guys. That's a Cezanne um, copy. And then, then this is clouds. This is year three. So year three is clouds. So this. Oops, I, I skipped over a flower. This was from year two. So that goes in here. So this is just one month. So it's a ton of stuff. Now, nowadays in year three, oh, and you also get a super stream lesson from year two. Every month, there's a recorded super stream lesson. So this is one of the ones from last year. Um, this was a kind of nocturne clouds thing. Um, so you get that. Now in year three, you also get you get a super stream lesson, which will be live for you. So you get the link, or you can watch it recorded. And additionally, this year we're starting a new feature, which I'm really happy to be doing. We're calling it the session wrap-up video, which will be another lesson, but it'll also be kind of putting a bow on the whole session. For instance, clouds, we just did that. And so I talked about all the projects and just did another lesson that kind of brought everything together. Was there something we missed? Was there something that, that I felt personally about it that I learned that I wanted to share? what I think you could do moving forward, um, how you might delve even deeper into that topic. So this, um, that's a new feature in year three. And I think that it's gonna be really powerful just to make sure that we really cover, because sometimes th three lessons on a topic is just, just not enough. We gotta, gotta keep going. So, um, year and year um, three, we have that wrap up video, which I think is really going to be really good. Those videos are a little more organic and I'm trying just to make a little bit more connection about how I feel about the, the lessons and the projects because I really am committed to breaking down those barriers between myself and my students. And I think that online lessons gives us that wonderful opportunity to stay connected over time and anywhere in the world. And I just haven't held anything back in year three at all. I never really did, but I am getting better at all this, a little more organized, and I can devote a lot more time connecting with students. Um, and again, I don't believe that there are any secrets, just some a lot of complexity to what we're doing. And just, I'm committed to breaking down that complexity and explaining um, how you might navigate it and come up with your own individual style. That's another thing that I know is really, really important to students. It's not about copying my stuff. It's really about just getting the fundamentals of painting so that you can find your own path. And I think everybody would like to do that. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and the other thing I, I really want to say about monthly pastel painting lessons online is that it's where most of my energy flows. I put a lot of time and energy and commitment into it. And so those people get all the goodies. <laughs> so for instance, last week I painted the, um, the, that forest light piece and I had uh, videotaped the um, doing the thumbnail of it and we the monthly people got that so that's you know part of their subscription and monthly members have access to a pastel only Facebook group monthly pastel painting lessons online and that is an amazing community of artists I am so proud of it um, they really motivate each other help each other I get in there as much as I can there are artists working at all levels in that group. 
so that you don't have to be t timid or embarrassed about posting because everyone is so helpful and really supporting one another. And it's really um, heartwarming to see everybody really helping one another out. No competition. It's just a fabulous resource um, for a pastelist. And additionally, you get access to the monthly trainings that I've been doing. So you'll have access to all of last year's trainings and the new ones that I do this year. And I feel like those trainings are really important because you might not have time one week to do a full painting, but kind of want to stay in that creative stream, right? You want to stay in that vibe. But So you might have time to do one of the exercises. I give a pastel exercise, not a finished painting, just something you can do in 15 minutes, a sketchbook exercise, and a creativity cultivator, which I think is just one of those things that might help you just, again, keep those artists' eyes going and stay in that stream. And um, I want to talk about the super streams a little bit um, because I think it can be confusing what I'm doing, but the super streams are really different from these um, public live streams that we do every week. They're really in depth. I cover a, either a foundation, a painting, or again, a subject matter. I did one that I called color tune-up. We did one that was just how to start, how to finish. Sometimes I do a painting, sometimes not. Sometimes it's more of a Q and A. And this year, the other feature that we're adding to those super streams, which I think is gonna make them even more powerful and even more uh, connected for students is where I'm going to be doing critiques. So I'll pick one or two pieces from submissions and we'll critique them. Critiquing, I think, is one of those things that is so important and pivotal in learning art. Um, we'll work on uh, digging into a piece with actionable advice. I really pride myself on being able to, to help students with really good advice, not just like, oh, it's not working, I don't know why. Uh, identify what is working in your piece, building on that and diminishing what's not, and also really identifying areas where you need to resolve issues. So we'll be doing that during the super streams this year as well. So I think that that's really um, gonna be really, really powerful. I know when I was in art school, critiques were a big deal. It was a big part of your learning. And I also think about critiques, we all kind of make the same mistakes. So even if your piece isn't selected for the critique, um, it's gonna, more than likely, it's going to apply to some of the things that you're doing. It just, we all kind of do the same stuff. So the other, the other fe feature that I think is nice for the, um, pastel paint, monthly pastel painting lessons online is that I really intend it to be the foundation, but if you want to dig even deeper into a particular subject and get even more detail on it, um, you can with my online workshops. And those are kind of standalone products separate from the subscription, but monthly members get a $15 off discount on any of the online workshops. And that's the oil ones, the watercolor sketching, acrylic, everything. So um, as you can see, the monthly people get, they get a lot of goodies. They get a lot of attention. And if you're a fan of mine, the best way to support me and ensure that I do these free things is to become a member of Monthly Pastel Painting Lessons Online. And so before I get started painting, I'm just gonna go down the list of what's um, included in the first 12 months as a member. Um, just really quickly, the first thing you get is the bonus lesson on Nocturne. So that's three full step-by-step -step lessons on Nocturne. There's getting started, gardenscapes, and clouds, and in month two, water, rivers and streams, chickens and ducks, and month three is sky and clouds, flowers and weather, month four is dealing with foregrounds, birds and still life, month five is including structures, master's focus, 
the Intimate Landscape, month six, work small and get better fast, sunrise and sunset and snowscapes, month seven, plain air experience, the Italian landscape and figures in the landscape. Month eight is how to paint glowing fall scenes, flower fields, and waves for year three, so that's cool. Month nine, underpainting techniques, fall color, and the expansive landscape. Month 10, the seasons in pastel, roads and pathways, and ordinary beauty. And month 11, focus on composition, seascapes, and master's focus. And month 12, mountains, rocks and cliffs, and figures in interiors. So it's a whole lot of stuff. And again, it's really intended to be a real foundational curriculum to keep you excited about pastel painting all year long. I wanna really help you to stay inspired, give you lots of new ideas, and help you through any painting ruts that you might have, and keep you going even like when you maybe get frustrated and don't feel like you're making that progress. Because the, the progress that we make as painters, it's. It's not like this, right? It's, it's kind of, it's squiggly and it takes time and we reach these plateaus and hit these places where it can be frustrating. And um, I wanna help you through that over time. And I think that I can do that. Uh, I and mean, I want you to feel really excited about getting to the easel and I want you to have those aha moments because I know for myself, that's what gets me excited about getting to the easel, whether it's pastel or acrylic, whatever I'm working about, working on. Right now I'm still working on some big peacock paintings um, out in my other studio, which I'll share at some point. But the other day I was doing something and I was like, gosh, that is so exciting. It, you know, I never thought I'd be painting peacocks for heaven's sake, but there I am. And it's so amazing when you get to the point where you can do some things that are like, whoa, that's neat. And I wanna help you do that too. So there's a ton of stuff, lots of content. I know it can be overwhelming, but I have to tell you um, that, that painting a lot over the points in my career is what really helped me out a lot. Um, I painted for galleries and festivals and live workshops, and I painted every single day, pretty much. Um, sometimes one or two paintings a day and I got better fast. And I think about the old masters too, they, they didn't have the same daily life, uh, modern life distractions that we have. They could really focus in undistracted on their craft. And um, I, so I wanna do that for you. I wanna distract you with pastel painting. So um, come and paint with me this year. It's gonna be fun and it's gonna be good. And I promise you, you'll get better. And I know lots of my students said they, you know, I, I helped them through the pandemic, which is, you know, really um, heartwarming. I'm really happy. Or just some other kind of difficult time. Because I think painting has such power to do that for us in our lives. It, it definitely does for me. And as you can tell, I, um, I think this subscription is a really extraordinary value. I don't think there's anything else out there on the market right now like it. And as an artist um, who's been teaching for over 30 years, I really truly believe in it. I designed it to be a, a very specific thing. Um, I think that there's lots of other teaching um, things that I've done. And I think this is by far the best because I can connect with you over that time that I'm talking about and be consistent and persistent about learning and improving. And so I really stand behind the quality of it. Um, and it's really incredible breadth and depth. I, we worked so hard. Um, it really does provide a lifetime of pastel painting foundation. So again, if you're a fan, that's the best way to support us and make sure that we do these free things. Um, so we're already planning out year four. And so I'm, you know, fun's never gonna stop for me. And we're, we're um, gonna be taking some ideas from you guys, what you wanna see in year four. And um, so that is it. So make sure you head to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check out the sale and check out all the stuff you're gonna get. Oh, the other thing I did want, I didn't show you, 
So this, these are the study guides for, um, this, would, this would be the very first month. You would get all of this in one month because this is the nocturnes. If you sign up, you get the nocturnes right away. You get um, year um, session, you get one session from year one, you get one session from year two, and you get one session from year three. And remember, each session has three or four full step-by-step -step lessons in it. And that doesn't include all the other goodies. Okay, well that's it, man. It's a lot. So Marla, there was one question. Yeah. How will the pieces selected for the critiques happen? Um, that's going to be up to my support team, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. We'll figure that yeah, out. Yeah, we'll figure, we'll let you know. It'll be, however it does happen, we'll make it really clear and easy for you to do that. So no worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll, we'll make it happen. It won't be that hard. Okay. So, um, that's that. It's fun. So much stuff. Yeah. And... Today, I'm going to paint this beautiful, from this beautiful reference, and I did a watercolor study of it, more than a study, it's kind of a pretty, um, pretty detailed, uh, well, I guess it's a study. Um, so there's a lot here that I like about the, um, the study. And I love the reference photo. It's so sparkling and beautiful and um, colorful. But what, what is it that I really want to get? Let me get my little pointer thing. What are the things that I'm really hot to get in this? I love that this, this guy here, I'm not sure whether that's, looks like it's probably a roadie. Uh, it's in shadow, but it still has this beautiful soft color in it. So one of the things that I'm going to concentrate on is not getting it too dark. Even the watercolor is a little bit too, too dark. Then this glowing light back in here, it's so pretty, and this light streaming in here. And it, this light streaming softly into this foreground, into this flower bed. Looks like these are little ferns. So pretty. Um, the placement of the tree, it could be over just a teeny bit. Maybe you see where my brush is because I think that would that's a little bit more the thirds. Maybe not. Maybe that's okay. Um, then there's a little, there's the sun streaming through here a little with a little corona around it. Whether I do that or not, um, the placement of it, I, if I do it, I might try to bring it down just a tad because I don't want it tangent to the, to the edge, the bounding box, the edge of my picture plane. So those are kind of things I'm thinking about, trying to think about ahead of time. Now, the watercolor study has given me a lot of uh, information about color, which is really kind of cool. Um, I was intentional about leaving some white in the watercolor for the sky. Now, one thing that happened today is I came out here to get set for the, for the lesson and um, I was going to use light green pastel mat and I don't have any. <laughs> So I had to uh, make a switch. So my apologies for those of you that are following along that in the video description, we said that I was going to be using light green. Well, I ran out. So I'm switched to the dark green, but I think it'll still work out just fine. I thought about using white, but the overall tonal, um, you know, the key of this is kind of more middle. And so because of that, I think this um, paper is better than using white. Now I could have decided to do like a watercolor underpainting or some kind of wash to um, minimize or, or to darken it a little bit, but I just felt like this would probably be a little bit, get, get me there a little faster.
So that's my plan. I've got my set of Giro's out here today as well as my regular palette because I think I might want to tap into these as well. So I'll see how that how that works out. Um, I'll try to move it around so that you can still see what I'm picking when I'm choosing. Okay, let's get going painting. We have, oh, while I'm getting set here, maybe if there's anybody that has questions, we can take a couple. And then I'm gonna kind of quiet down and do some do some thoughtful painting today. <laughs> well, a few people mentioned in the chat that they, they like to jump around. So um, yeah. they'll pick, they'll pick, so you can do that when you buy the monthly. You can you know, say if you're in. If you the buy first the session. whole, if you buy it, it, do the annual payment, then you can jump around everything. But even within the month, the you know because there's three sessions now. Even if you do just monthly, there's still a lot to jump around in. Oh yeah, so yeah, you don't have to do them in order. You can. You do not have to do them in order. It's not. It's not really um, designed like that. Um, there is the getting started, and um, in year one, and I, I, I just feel like there that needs to be there because there may be people that are just just starting out and they need that that very um, foundational information, the getting started stuff that's real heavy on materials and whatnot. All right, so I'm just gonna get in here and do a little drawing. And I'm gonna get my little bounding box. And this bounding box is um, um, delineating that picture plane. So this is like the this is the container that my painting is um, taking up. And I'm just gonna give myself a couple little key um, marks to tell me where things are sitting so that I can get the elements uh, in where, where I want them to be. So here's a um, question that's not really related to the painting today, but um, what hanging system are you using to hang the paintings in the background? Oh, those are pro panels. The pro panels. They're pro panels, and they are kind of they're they are kind of pro. Um, they, you know, they're I had those from my art festival days. Yeah, we we uh, repurposed them here yeah, in the we studio, did. and they've really come in. They're hand. great. They also do something unexpected for us in here. Is that they're because they're made of fabric, they do a nice job of. Um, uh, uh, with the sound, so they're it's kind of cool. They're not cheap. No, they're not cheap, but I had them, so they were just sitting in my shed. And one day, I don't know, I don't know which one of us was like, "Hmm, what about this? I could use this." Yeah, it creates a nice clean look. Yeah, like a studio look. Um, so I'm just getting some of these shapes in. Now I'm going to get this this main tree. You know, I want to. Where's the baseline of that? Do maybe I do want to scoochie it over just a little. And then I'm going to play with what's. I want this, these distant trees, I want them to have a really soft, ethereal look. Now, last week when I did the forest light, I did really like how that turned out in terms of the, the soft look of it. Now I can see I've got things a little bit, so this, this actually comes over a little bit more and silhouettes this tree, so I missed that already. Don't want to miss that. Um, and the light. Now, 
this is where I want to look at my sketch because I think in my sketch the light kind of streaming in is a little stronger back here and um, I like the softness of the photo but I also don't want to miss it so um, taking a little gander at the sketch is helpful, I think. And those little ferns. It's a, it's a garden. This is Bishop's Close, also called Elk Rock Garden in Portland. It's a beautiful um, garden. It is, um, it's owned by the um, Episcopal Diocese of Oregon, but um, it was built by a man who, uh, it was owned by a, a man, I think they were grain, um, they made their fortune in grain, um, and they, he was Scottish, but he, the, the grounds, the siting of the garden and the, um, of the house and the garden was designed by um, the Olmsteds and they are really famous landscape designers who did all kinds of things for um, um, national parks and you know, big, big deal. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, serene garden with beautiful pathways and ponds and streams and if you ever get to Portland it's definitely something worth taking the time to visit. It's open all year. It's open to the public, but you can't play there. You can't you can't picnic there. You can't you can only walk and contemplate and enjoy. You can't you can't take you can't have a wedding there. None of that none of that stuff. It's just 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 so calming and contemplate. It has a fantastic Amazing view of Mount Hood. So it's cool. All right, so that's, I think this is enough information for me in my sketch. Now, at this point, this sketch is all for me. It might, this, this stage of the game, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody but you. I'm putting marks down that are going to orient me. And that's it. It doesn't have to be, doesn't, it doesn't look like very much, but it makes sense to me. Not very much of value. I could have put a little more value. I could put a little, this is kind of the underside of this main guy right here. I could put a little bit more value in just to kind of, but I think that's pretty good. Okay, good. Now I can start, start in with some painting. And now I'll just try to shut up. Shut up and paint, Marla. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not good at, but good at it. Carol would like to know um, how important is the color of the pastel mat for this piece? Um, I would have liked to have had the light green. It's okay. It's, you know, I, I think uh, it's, it's, I always think it's, it's something to consider. It, I don't let, if I don't have the right color or the exact color that I want, I don't let it stop me. So.
In other words, I'm not going to probably switch what I'm going to do unless there's, I, I'm going to use what I have most of the time. This is tricky. I need another. I need another table. Um, Here's a quick question on blue spruce. Um, Patsy says when she uses uses it in a piece which will be light in color value, like the peonies in year two, um, the blue spruce smudges and darkens the light pastels. Yep. So you have that same issue. For me, it's not an issue. It's a good attribute. You work with it. I like it. I want it. I want that kind of stained edge. I think it adds interest to the edges.
just a reminder that I want that. I'm gonna have to, maybe I'm gonna have to get another tray system here. I wanna keep my, my, uh, I'll have to change my uh, thing here. Set up, maybe we can build some kind of tier system or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a, like a, you know, the uh, seats in a, in a theater, you know? You know, um, I think Tony Elaine has a like a, you know, remember what? See, remember I showed you a picture of his. That, yeah, that was wild. Yeah, it's cool though. Really quick question: Do you ever cut your pastels in half? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Now, are you using the Duro pastels today to get finer control of the marks, or? Um, I've just enjoyed them lately. I just, you know, they have a just a nice, um, kind of medium hard. Not, they're not too hard. Um, so there's just, you know, they. I just kind of like, like them. This is almost the same. This is, see this, this is almost exactly the same as the paper. <laughs> um, and uh, that's always a good thing to have at your disposal because you, you can, then if you need to actually make a little bit more negative space in a way. In a way. So this is, I'm gonna set that where I know where it is. Now today, I, I'm, I'm definitely, um, intentionally staying a little bit lighter in value overall because it's kind of dark and uh, you know just as a painter I, I just have that little bit of a tendency and I think it's really common to just be a little heavy-handed a little be a little bit too dark and I don't want that I mean this I'm you know it's so ethereal I want that feeling And easy to, no, that's not what I want. Let's see. This one will do it. Yeah, it's a good color for my flower bed in here. I think my tree trunk needs to come down just a little bit more. And as I get in here, it kind of switches to something a little bit darker. Let's see if I've got something that'll work. Yeah, this is kind of good. question on lighting. 
Do you think having too bright of studio lights could make someone in unintentionally work too dark? Yeah, it's one of the reasons I probably work a little dark um, because I, um, we light the studio for uh, not just the painting surface, we light the studio for the filming and also I, I, um, I just like it. <laughs> And so, you know, the consequences of that are that I, you know, I probably work a little um, overall kind of dark. So, you know, that's, that's just something really just to be aware of. In your other studio, you know, we have these new garage doors that are just all natural light. Which yes. Is really nice. It's pretty neato. The natural light is tricky to film with because it comes and it goes. So we have to, yeah, we it have is. to balance everything out for the videos. Yeah, so, you know, you, yeah, you, you, you have to balance stuff out. Okay, it's kind of coming together a bit, just a bit. I like it. I'm looking for a color for this tree trunk here. Not sure this is quite it, but I'm gonna start there. I want it wants to be a little darker. As it heads up here. The 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 tree trunk it has a gradation on it. It's dark it gets darker. I just want to get that in there just so I can that's all I'm, I'm, I just want it in there for right now, and then um, I'll add on to that. I want to. I'm going to warm this up a little bit, but I, I'm just going to get this in here. I think this is just about the right value. Not quite the right color, but I'm going to start by trying to get the right value. So um, I'm going to err on the side of value. And I'm going to I'm going to start moving just a little bit faster now. Um, because now I'm feeling 
a little more um, confident that I've got some things to work with. I want this. When you were first beginning pastel, would you have tried to tackle such a complica complicated scene? Um, I don't know if it's complicated. It's got a, um, it's, you know, the thing about stuff that you, 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 oh, you feel it's complicated. It's not, it, most most things in in painting are not if you break it down and get it s simplified it's not like they're they're complicated or something that's co like com complex doesn't necessarily mean it's hard it just means you have to just break it down and um uh do one thing at a time <laughs> make it understandable for yourself. You know, how how can I see this in a way that I can understand it? Um, 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 um. All right, let's get these little flowers in there. Kind of, they're kind of clustered. They, you know, you don't want to make a pattern. The, the last thing I want to do is, you know, put, you know, this little pattern. They're clustered. Some of them are farther away, so that I'm, I'm seeing them at. A, a little more of an oblique angle. Some of them, are, some of them are facing right towards me. So I'm seeing them more of a, a as a kind of a circle. Others not so much. Some of them are tucked in to the foliage more. Some of them are sitting right up there out in silhouette. So that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to, some of them are smaller because they are, in fact, they're farther away or turned away. So that's the kind of thing I want to think of. And I'm putting them in just in, as one color for right now, but I will um, add on to that as I get, get a little further. Some of them are are a little bit little bit more in shadow. It's all, overall it's kind of this neat kind of shadow shape. It's really really pretty. So the the Giro set you're working with, um, do you know which one it is? No, I don't because it was given to me. Ah, uh, it was a gift. I remember it was that. A gift. Yeah. Another Which is very another, uh, an artist that was no longer working in pastel, a former student. It's quite um, a generous gift. She's moving too, so she just didn't have room for everything. That was a score. It was a great, it was a lovely, generous gift.
Yeah, kind of getting there. I want... So this kind of soft purpley gray I'm using up here for the distant um, uh, evergreen. kinds of stuff sitting there. That's not what I want. I want something even... Yeah. All right, now there's a lot of fun stuff going on here. It looks pretty good. Time to look at that sky because I think that getting some of that white in there for the sky will kind of pull it nicely together. Um, but I, as usual, I lied. I'm gonna do this first. I'll finish that in a little bit, but that, that's kind of kind of cool. Good. Maybe, maybe this guy is a little bit darker. I, w I want that layering like this is still in shadow and it's silhouetted against all that beautiful light. And then there's all this going on that's also really interesting. I want to get some of these in before I start putting in the sky. So I can kind of play off of them with the negative shapes. And so I'm holding the pastel really gently and lightly, trying to get a nice kind of broken lyrical gestural line there. Organic. Uh, 
Okay, I think that's enough enough fiddling around. All right, with that and So, um, Marla, on the chat, mm -hmm. some folks giving each other advice. Um, Mike H. is giving Christopher some advice on papers. Mm -hmm. And we do appreciate that when people kind of help each other out. Oh, yeah, chat. yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Because on the subject we of paper, um, just in general, there's all kinds and it has all different qualities. You really have to experiment with stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you really have to find what kind of floats your boat and... So to me, that's um, one of the good things that you could do, uh, Dakota Pesta, and I'm, I'm not pitching, I don't, nobody sponsors me or anything like that, but Dakota Pastels has a sampler of papers, and that's a great way to um, test out without, you know, a huge investment uh, um, of a nice variety of different kind, kinds of paper. Um, anything you can do to, you know, to just experiment around, and the and and you know it just goes on and on and on. That different papers um, are different with the different brands of pastel, and so um, you really have to um, see what you like. You know, when I first started painting in pastel, I used just Canson paper, and 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 then I remember I bought some. Wallace paper and I just didn't like it at all. I put it in the drawer and it stayed in the drawer for a really, really, really long time. And then finally I, um, you know, revisited it and thank goodness I did because then, you know, that just really unlocked a lot of things for me. But um, uh, yeah, so, you know, we, we all can get into our own kind of little habits and ruts. And so it's, to me, the best thing is to just try everything. Try everything. Okay. All right, I'm going to work on the sky. The sky is going to pull it all together. We aren't going over, but that's okay. This is needs some work, though, but I haven't gotten there yet. So, But it's, it's got some nice stuff going on, so it pleases me. Oh, one thing I want to do is I want to open up this space. I want to make it a little bigger. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's neat. Yay. All right. Sky, sky, sky. Um, okay, I had been using this one over here. Is this what I use? No, that's a little different. It was this one. It's a little more lemony. And I'm, I think I'll stick with that and maybe add a little bit more something that's a little whiter white in addition. So the first thing I'm going to do is come around the, and just in a more broad fashion, decide on what the shape of the sky is. Um, I'm not going to put in this branch here. So I'm simplifying. You know, I can always come back and work positive and negative. So I can put something over the top of the, the light. Right in here is important. I think for the whole character of the whole piece.
and that light, see how the light goes on either side of those branches, giving it its silhouette. You want it even softer. I'm going to get two. I think I opened that up a little too much. I'll come back. That tree shape looks a little funny now, so that's okay. Uh, I get an, I want something a little whiter. It's kind of leaning more than. Um, I think look, would look good. I think it would look better if it didn't lean so much. I think it would look better if it was a little bluer. This guy. Now, I'm, let's see. Yeah, that's starting to get there. Got a, it's a little messy up in here, that's okay. It's starting to come together.
Now, what do I want to do about that? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it work. I could probably work it out, the, the little corona, um, if I had a little more time. But this is starting to come together nice. That's I like that. It's ghosted back there. That's what I'm that was that's what I'm struggling a little bit to get. That really sitting back there um, feeling. getting there. to the edge. Not supposed to blow on it. <laughs> Get this dark. I like this this layering so there's a dark in front of this light. And this dark under here. And then we really get that stepping back into that distant. Now you can come back and get some of these branches. And I don't have the, the all of these trees in here, all the craziness. So I'm trying to get some thicker strokes in there and some thinner ones. But during our lessons, you know, I, I, one of the talking about doing complicated things, I really show you guys how, how to simplify things down, how to work out the drawing so it's not, so nothing can, nothing's intimidating. You can paint whatever you want and, and, and do it well. Some things just take a little more time. More time doesn't mean more doesn't mean it has to be harder. All right, so I want to have an idea that I want. Can you talk a little bit about your choice of sky color, or warm or cool? Or cool? Um, yeah. Uh, so in this case, of course, that really, like, 
kind of blown out. It's like really bright and white almost. Over here, it's um, the sky holes. It's 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 actually foliage over here that's um, uh, you know almost yellow. So what, you know, I'm I'm choosing the uh, the sticks based on is it warm? Is it cool? Right here, this is not sky, this is some really bright vegetation behind. Now this, this little tree guy has a little edge to it that's getting a teeny little bit of a silhouette. fun. To me this place, it, it looks like a fairy tale. I like that. Let's get a couple, a little bit more dynamics in, in those roadies. So I'm going to pick out some something maybe a little lighter. Give them a little bit more interest. A little more form. I need to go crazy. One thing I'd like to do, there's a little, there's a light right, right in here. Kind of nice to get. So it feels like that the, this roadie is really like, you know, the, the foliage is blocking the, the, the light, but, but it's making its way in. So we'll put this piece up on Daily Paintworks a little bit later. Um, last week's piece is still available, so it has not sold, so that's there too. A little idea of some branches within this guy. And some, just some fun texture and not so much detail. Yeah, you could say it's a detail, but it's very implied.
Um, and it might be fun to get something a little bit lighter. I'm going to see if I like it. That light. Maybe. Yeah, that's kind of neat. And um, just about there, I think. This is the kind of piece you could kind of go on and on. It's kind of endless, but do you need to? All right. Okay, guys, so definitely go check out the website and our sale is through the summer. And definitely the best way to, to, to keep these coming is to go over there and check it out and sign up for the monthly pastel painting lessons online. And I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just about leave it at that for this week. Do another pastel next week. But um I think it's I think that's pretty neat. Let's put a mat on it and see what it looks like. Oh, we went so long. Ugh. Yeah, it has a nice look. The quality of lights, really. Um, obviously, the most important thing. I think that comes across pretty nice. All right. All right, guys. Who? I'm tired. Um, I hope you have a really, really wonderful weekend, now. And I hope um, wherever you are that the weather um, is, is okay and um, enjoyable. Um, it's kind of crazy. We had such a heat wave here a couple, it's a couple weeks ago now? A couple boy. weeks ago. It's getting oh, kind boy. Of cool now. Yeah, it's a but day it, it's a beautiful, beautiful day here in Oregon. Um, okay, so yeah, make sure you check out the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check out the monthly pastel painting lessons online and, and the other workshops that are there and watercolor acrylic and oil and other ones in pastel. So um, check it out and I hope to see you back here next Friday when we paint something else. I'm not sure what it'll be yet. Okay. All right. Bye guys. <laughs>